Yes, uh, hello, hello everybody. Uh, good evening. Um, this is, uh, I'm one of the 50 percent that uh, this is their first uh, course CVP meetup, so thank you for uh, having me. Um, I'm uh, going to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, a variant. It's uh, a C++ uh, a component from STL as of uh, CVP 17, and, but the, the concept has already been uh, with us for a long time. And I will tell you a little bit about uh, how uh, uh, people usually use it and there are a few uh, uh, ways that uh, uh, I think uh, aren't commonly used and, and I think can be nice. Okay, so I'll basically start with the introduction, tell you a little bit about what it is, to try to make sure that we're all uh, on the same page. Then I'll uh, uh, dive deep into the differences between uh, variants and unions and cases how people usually uh, um, use unions uh, if they don't know variants or if they uh, or for, for several use cases where variants uh, themselves aren't so good and then I'll try to uh, give us uh, some tools and some ideas on how we can uh, still uh, uh, get I guess uh, the best of, of both worlds and uh, get uh, the, the values of, uh, of variants with uh, uh, some of the benefits uh, that unions give us already and those are uh, intrusive variants and streams of variants. Um, if we have uh, uh, some more time at the end, I might uh, show you yet another uh, trick that's irrelevant but related to variants as well. And feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions if you like. Uh, I, I'm currently, you know, very, very focused on the slides, so I won't see anything in the chat. So just tell me if you have any questions. Okay, so first of all, uh, what is a variant? A variant is very much uh, 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 like a union. CPP reference says that it's a, a a type safe union, okay, boost.org, boost had unions for a very long time. They call it a, a safe, generic, stack-based, discriminated union, okay? So basically what it means, it's just like a union for, that we, I hope, all uh, remember from C, um, but it also knows the type it, it, of the type it is, okay? So uh, in that manner, it, it is much uh, safer because we don't need to guess what type it is, okay? So in C, we could have a union of an integer and a double, a function uh, foo can, uh, can take uh, the union and reference the integer, but it might be a mistake, it might be undefined behavior. Um, in C++, we can do pretty much the same with the variant of a double, uh, or a double, uh, but the function bar here uh, uses the function get, will actually check that the uh, type is, is currently an int, and otherwise it will throw an exception. Okay, so that's uh, basically what a variant is. In terms of a, a memory layout, this also I think should uh, mostly be uh, familiar to you all. Um, so uh, a struct, you know, if I have three uh, members in a struct, they are basically uh, uh, spread around memory one after another. There's also the uh, issue of padding, uh, you know, a character between an int and a double will usually uh, have a few extra bytes of padding in order to keep alignment. Uh, and the C++ tuple is basically the same in terms of memory alignment. On the other hand, the union is a, what's called a, a sum type. It's an OR. It can hold only one of the three uh, types, uh, and they all uh, basically take uh, the, all the room that the largest one uh, holds. Okay, so if I have an, a union of three types in C, the, the size is, is the largest of all, of all three sizes, and uh, only one of the three can, uh, can hold. A variant, as you can see, is larger because on top of uh, having uh, the union, we also keep a tag. The tag usually um, is, uh, is, is, is as small as, it, as you want it, but there's still the matter of, uh, of alignment. So a tag will usually take uh, one or two bytes. Um, if, if we have, we get to two bytes only if we have uh, 255 uh, different uh, variations of the variant. Um, and we still have padding to, to be aligned, okay? Great, <clears throat> so uh, what is good for? What, what do people usually use variants for? Uh, basically, uh, when, when they talk about it, when we see it, so, if I, I looked around YouTube, I looked around conferences, and there are some very uh, common uh, themes that we see around. I will basically uh, just mention the, all of these uh, to give you a, a hint and show you some, uh, some links to YouTube talks. But my talk is not about them, but still, uh, if, if you want, you can uh, dig deeper. Okay, so state machines, basically, you know, we might remember from university, a state machine is a, is a collection of states where at every point only one is active. So very, very typical, uh, only have one of many to, to use a union or a variant. Um, many people uh, like the fact that uh, 
Uh, this is a dynamic type where we can change the type as it go along but with very, very simple uh, value semantic memory behavior. Okay, we have assignment operator, we have move operators, we have uh, um, um, even a comparison and hash functions. Everything uh, uh, looks uh, very much like a typical value type uh, object, although it's, it's dynamic and it can itself hold uh, many, many types. It's not like a pointer that doesn't typically hold the uh, value semantics. And uh, many people use uh, uh, the command uh, uh, design pattern um, with, uh, uh, with variants because command is typically something that we pass along from one object to another. We want the value semantics there and uh, we still want it to be dynamic, okay? Another very simple use uh, 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 is, is for success or failure, okay? There's uh, this idiom called the expected T, okay? Expected T is something that can either be T or it can be a failure, okay? It's a very, uh, it's a uh, very uh, narrow uh, variant of two, two, two options or it's a, it's a variation or variant with the two options, either T or an exception or an error. Similarly, optional T, which is also part of the C++ standard, is either a T or nothing, okay? So it's also a type of variant. So variant is a generalization, generalization of, of optional. And the last uh, thing that we see when we uh, uh, look at people talk about uh, variants is pattern matching. Pattern matching is, pattern matching is a little bit of a complicated topic. It's very, very common and, and very hip to talk about pattern matching right now, uh, especially in other uh, programming languages like Haskell and like Rust. And uh, a variant has this uh, uh, nice uh, uh, um, standard uh, function or utility called visit, which uh, basically can, uh, can, we can use and, uh, and, and match uh, and, and call the right code based on, on the type of what we give it. And uh, there, there are various uh, uh, you know, ways to make uh, our code look uh, maybe uh, simpler or nicer using that thing. Well, I'll, I'll mention it a little bit more in the next slide, okay? So basically, uh, state machines, you see, I think this is a talk yeah, from meeting CPP uh, from, from, from more than a year ago. Um, we can see a variant used um, uh, to show different states in a state machine. Um, let's see. Um, again, uh, uh, here is, I think, from 2018 CPPCon. Another uh, nice example of using uh, uh, variants for state machines. Um, again, different states in a variant, different events going between the loops in a variant. Et cetera, et cetera. You can go and uh, look up those uh, lectures if you want to get more details. Um, commands also were uh, common. Another talk from CPPCon, uh, a very, uh, um, I guess, uh, a very uh, old one, even before a, a standardization of variant, where again uh, we can have very various types of commands. And we see that uh, a, a command is a variant of different uh, uh, objects that can be passed around from from place to place. Okay. And uh, this is, a, again, a, a talk from 2018 from uh, Alex Andrescu uh, describing a, a, a notion of uh, expected. And he again uh, mentions that the STD variant and STD optionals are all the, uh, uh, some, some technologies that he thought about when he uh, designed and we, uh, we uh, I guess, uh, suggested this uh, uh, concept of expected, which I think is now uh, is making its way into boost. And uh, maybe th there are also voices to make similar things um, moving into uh, the standard, okay? Uh, optional two, uh, as I mentioned, uh, discussed uh, uh, just last year in CPP now, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Evan Lieber's very, very uh, excellent uh, deep dive into uh, uh, variants and the whole standardization process, this describing uh, how uh, variants came to be, what uh, uh, the uh, different iterations uh, of it were, uh, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Last but not least, pattern matching. Here's uh, Michael Park, he's from uh, Facebook, and he's uh, doing a lot of the work uh, in order to try and introduce uh, variants uh, or pattern matching into C++. Pattern matching, basically, uh, many people hope they will be uh, a new part of the language in C maybe uh, C++ 23, um, where basically we can do, uh, uh, we can look at, an, an, at a variant and write switch uh, uh, or things similar to switch cases uh, where instead of switching on, on constant values, we will be able to switch on types and on subtypes within them. Okay, so here's the way it looks in uh, uh, CPP uh, uh, 17, where we can have the, vi the visit function, maybe with the overload uh, um, utility. We can, you can see we have like three different switch cases, okay, on the three different types of, of, the, of the variant. 
and the, and the code uh, inside can access uh, the specific uh, type uh, as it likes. Okay, this is, this is a very, very uh, um, you know, basic type of pattern matching. If you look at the other languages that do pattern matching, they have a very much more sophisticated, sophisticated way to do it. And uh, basically, Mark, Michael is trying to push uh, along with his colleagues uh, forward some uh, uh, agendas and some uh, um, ideas to make uh, uh, a much more uh, rich uh, type of uh, uh, pattern matching and visitation uh, towards uh, uh, the standard and towards uh, the language. And you can see his talks as well, both in CppCon and CPP now, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, as uh, you see, Mike, Michael mentions that uh, a visitation through visit uh, currently is, is, is too complex. By the way, I should mention that the visit function in this example accepts only one visitor and they, each of the lambdas accepts only one argument, but visit actually also supports uh, variadic uh, arguments and uh, multiple visitors with, of different types. And, uh, the, and, and thus the, uh, the library or the, the language needs to decide which of different uh, uh, lambdas best matches different uh, types of variants. Okay, so that's uh, basically um, uh, the pattern matching in, in a sense. Okay, even uh, Michael in this same talk uh, gives this uh, uh, screenshot of, uh, you know, of this person saying SD visit is everything that is wrong with modern C++. I, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, to say uh, anything uh, too, uh, too good or bad or, or put, to pass judgment uh, about this statement, but I should just tell you that this is a very uh, a hot topic right now of how to make better use of, uh, of, of variants, uh, both today and uh, in future uh, versions of the language. And there's also uh, 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 Navy Lieber also, uh, you know, uh, quotes uh, uh, Brian St Bjarne Strostrup uh, from the uh, committee talks, also talk talking about visitation being unpleasant at the moment and uh, uh, the, the need uh, uh, for pattern matching to become a language feature. Uh, and again, there's hope that you might be there um, sometime in the maybe near future. Okay, so that's uh, uh, basically uh, my introduction about variants to give you a short uh, idea of what they are, to give you some uh, um, perspective on what maybe else you can find uh, on the online uh, if you want to, to learn more about other things related to variants. Okay, now let's talk a little bit uh, uh, deeper into uh, variants versus uh, unions. Okay, again, I assume everyone knows uh, what unions are. You remember the, the memory layout as we said. And the basic difference is the tag, okay? The tag is private in a variant, okay? And the fact that the tag is private means that the variant is safe, okay? The only way to change the tag is using a, a constructor a constructor or an assignment operator, okay? If I have a variant, I want to change its type, I need to actually assign uh, or, or construct the, uh, the variant with a specific type. There's no other way for me to, put, uh, to, to change the tag. And this means that, the, that I cannot make a mistake, okay? The, the, the safety of a C++ is, a very, uh, is very helpful for me. And uh, another thing is that uh, unlike, uh, for example, uh, uh, typical switch cases and, uh, and uh, maybe virtual functions as well, at compile time, if I have a variant of a few specific uh, types, the compiler knows all of them at compile time and, can, and also gives me uh, some safety. Okay, so let's uh, look at an example. Okay, here's some C code. You can see I have uh, 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 three types, three ways to identify uh, someone basically. Or I have, I can have a, a, an ID number, okay? I can have a passport number, or I can have a UUID for, for a machine, okay? And, uh, I, I, and I basically imagine that uh, a citizen will have an ID number, a tourist will have a passport number, and a robot will have a, a factory certificate, okay? So, Basically in C, I can obviously write a, a, a check function that receives a, 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 this union, this identity card, and its type, okay? Two separate uh, arguments maybe. And I can use a switch case to, uh, to basically uh, access the, the, uh, whatever information I need in the right way, okay? Obviously, uh, this is not very safe. And even in this uh, specific code, I have planted several bugs, okay? I'm not sure, uh, uh, how many of the bugs uh, you've seen. I don't know if you want to, maybe I can give you uh, like 10 seconds to try and uh, look for some of the bugs. If you like, you can say some and you don't have to. So 10 seconds. No break. Okay, cool. So, uh, so first of all, 
uh, here we, we even in the case of a, cit of, a, of, of a citizen, we access the passport uh, member. Okay, the, for a citizen, we wanted to access the, the ID member, but uh, we missed it, and the compiler won't help us. Okay, As, uh, we also have missed about the robot. Okay, where's the robot in, in this uh, case? It's just gone, which is a shame. And uh, someone mentioned, uh, you know, three statements all the way back from uh, from uh, uh, the 70s. Uh, needs to have a, a break, and typically we want a break, and uh, that, that is a shame. I should uh, tell you that, by the way, uh, if you turn on all the warnings and, and even turn them into errors, then happily our uh, modern compilers will help us in some of these things, okay? May many modern compilers can, can tell us that uh, we might have uh, thought about uh, uh, a break and will, will, will tell us uh, uh, that we should either break or fall through. And uh, also uh, the fact that uh, they, uh, we use an enum and not just an integer, means that uh, C++ compilers uh, will many times uh, warn us and tell us that there's a missing uh, a case and no default uh, uh, clause as well, which is helpful, but it, again, it's not part of the language and uh, you know, typically in C, we can lose, okay? So how does this thing uh, uh, look uh, uh, from a variant perspective? Okay, so from variant, things are much uh, simpler. An identity card can be a variant of three types, okay? Basically, it holds both the, the, the union and the type and the type as well, the type itself. And uh, this uh, visit basically does all the work I want for me. Okay, you can see I, I give it uh, one lambda, one generic lambda that receives an auto. I need to call in this lambda I call a method, for example, on the uh, on the object, and uh, and at that point on, uh, 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 all is fine. If, if the compiler will make sure that all the different uh, entities of the variants actually have a check uh, method. And if not, I'll get a compile time error. Um, there's no way for me to forget anything, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is uh, the safety of, uh, of the variant on top of union, okay? So this is a good thing. Um, but to tell you the truth, um, this example is a very, very uh, mean example for me because people who actually write C code don't write C code that way. They usually don't have a function that receives a union on one hand and a type on the other hand, because typically even people writing C know that the tags come together with the object or with the union. And it's quite common for people to, uh, uh, to put the tag uh, very, very close in memory to the union, okay? Typically is a header right in front of it, okay? So I think it's quite common in C to see things like this, okay? Like an identity card struct, which has a type followed by a union, okay? This is a, uh, relatively common, uh, you know, way of, uh, of looking at things. And I can have a function that receives the identity card and switch based on the type to know how to access the union. By the way, you can see that uh, the union can have a name or, or not. Okay, this is a relatively uh, old feature in C and recently added uh, to C++ as well. Where I can have a, an unnamed union inside a struct. I, I won't uh, go into details, but sometimes it can make things uh, uh, nice and, and comfortable. However, this, uh, uh, this approach is nice, but it's not uh, uh, the only one that uh, people use. Sometimes people also actually um, put the header inside each and every part of the union, okay? So here, we, the, the header is more implicit, okay? I have uh, an ID type, which is the type, and I put it inside both the citizen and the tourist in the same offset, in the same location. And many times I put uh, another uh, uh, struct in the union, which is only the header. Okay, the nice thing about this is that uh, I can have either functions in my code that receive an identity card, or if I want, I can have functions that only receive a citizen. And if a, even if a function receives a citizen, it, it can still check the type if it likes or check the header if it likes. Okay, this is many times uh, uh, makes sense because over time we see that even the different uh, uh, values that are, uh, will have common information and we will put the common information inside the header, okay? So uh, an expir expiration date of the card, maybe uh, a photograph of, uh, of the entity that we're identifying, other things can maybe go later on into the header. Um, and that's why uh, um, you know, we want a function that uh, uh, you know, receives a citizen or we work on a citizen, we might want uh, to uh, have some, some access to the uh, header as well, okay? And then sometimes uh, in the, uh, uh, in, in, in C, you see like various macros and various defines of all the different uh, 
header fields copied to all the different test tracks, etc. Obviously, there are other ways to do it. Even in, in C, you can uh, have the header struct uh, outside of the of the union and uh, just make sure that uh, that uh, this is the first member of each of the union alternatives, etc., uh, etc. Et if we move um, uh, towards uh, C++, um, we can uh, uh, try and uh, make things a little uh, uh, more object-oriented. Okay, and, and uh, remember that uh, the memory layout of base classes is practically a header. Okay, if, if I have a base class, then uh, its, its memory is right in front of me. Okay, so, uh, so in uh, C++, I can write a, a, a header struct with, with all its fields. The different uh, uh, types will be, will, will be uh, derived from it. And my union will have the three different uh, types. Okay, so these are different ways uh, to do it in C. And with all these different ways, the memory layout is basically the same. We have the tag first with, as a header, and then a union of the different uh, types. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the basic idea. And, uh, and all of them, you know, they're basically, uh, you know, syntactic sugars, but still they use the union. They have no, none of the safety. All the bugs from the last slide can generally uh, appear in, in this code as well. And, uh, and now I'll try to, uh, to talk, to, to tell you how we can maybe keep this uh, memory layout, but be a little more safe, okay? Use a little C++ to be a little more safe. Okay, so first of all, uh, why do we want it? The C layout is important. Okay, this C layout is uh, quite common. Um, and because it's a uh, 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 common people use it a lot, uh, it's, it's, you can see it in the network protocols, okay? Even TCP IP, you know, we have the different, the, the network uh, layers, uh, uh, you know, uh, ethernet layer, and the inside it, uh, the IP, inside the TCP, each one is basically uh, a header. And based on some uh, member of the header, I know how to look and how to parse uh, the, the next uh, part of the, of the packet. In finance, where uh, I work, where Istra lives, it's also quite common to see network protocols, both for market data and for uh, binary protocols, where when you converse with exchanges, we have fixed base uh, structures, relatively fixed size structures. Um, but uh, you need to choose uh, which one based on some header. You can see uh, these types of uh, um, structures in file formats, in serialization protocols. So it's quite common. And many times, even in your company, you will have legacy code that uh, treats uh, or looks at the uh, binary information this way. So if you, have a, if you write a safer, uh, uh, no, a safer uh, implementation that uses this exact uh, type or this exact layout, will all be, uh, I think, much uh, happier because we'll be able to migrate new code to work with old code, okay? And obviously, um, in, in this uh, 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 model, we might not be as safe as STD variant, but uh, we can uh, get a lot of safety and, be, uh, uh, and still uh, uh, make it a uh, win-win. Okay, so, um, so basically, the, the suggestion is for an intrusive variant, okay? Intrusive means that uh, the tag isn't uh, hidden from us, okay? Is it out of our control? The tag is in our control, okay? And maybe someone, uh, maybe uh, like our legacy code or some third party, uh, um, um, some third party uh, vendor decided which values in the tag corresponds to which uh, items in the, uh, in the union. And we still want to, to, to do it and look inside, in, inside the, the structure and understand the type without this extra tag that is out of our control. Okay, so basically the idea is let's have an intrusive variant similar to a variant, okay? Um, but uh, we need to tell it where to look for the tag, okay? So here I can say my tag is of type ID type, okay? And it, look, and it resides in the offset where the member type is of the header, okay? So you can see here on the uh, right-hand side, the header as a, as a member, we know we, we can uh, tell the intrusive variant, this offset, you should, you should be able to find a member of this type. Okay, if you look, if you look at it, this will tell you, uh, you know, what, what, what the, how to interpret the union, okay? And then we can start giving the various uh, uh, alternatives of the variant. We can say that, hey, if the ID type is a citizen, I moved uh, to an enum class now because I'm in C++, um, then I, then I want to interpret the value as a citizen. And if, it's, uh, uh, if the, the, the ID or the type is a tourist in the header, then I would like to look at this thing as a, as a, a tourist, okay? 
So that's the basic idea. Once I uh, define uh, my, uh, my intrusive variant this way, I can basically use it just as if, uh, ju just as I use, uh, um, I guess, regular variants in, the, in C++. Um, I can use the, the visit function, I can use the, uh, the get, I can get the uh, safe uh, exceptions, etc. cetera. Um, but happily, the memory layout is just as we are used to it from uh, the good old C days, okay? Another uh, uh, way to do it, um, if, if I control, uh, the, uh, if I want to control uh, the structs as well, I can add a, a, a static uh, a member to each of the uh, different structs with the, and call it a header value T. And uh, I know that uh, uh, the, if, uh, if the type is the header value uh, of the citizen, it will be a citizen. If it's a tourist, it's a tourist. Okay, you can see that we, I use integral constants here and not just uh, integrals. This is just, uh, you know, because of uh, the, the way I, uh, I, you know, this uh, can, can be implemented. Perhaps it can be implemented with just uh, size T items. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, basically this is, uh, uh, I think, a nice, uh, relatively nice compact way to have something that's very like, a, much like a variant with a lot of the safety, uh, but uh, uh, keeping with the backwards compatibility with the memory layout that we uh, are used to from the past. Okay, so that's an uh, intrusive variant. As you can see, it's, it's quite nice. It's, it's, it's relatively safe if I know what I'm doing. Okay, but still this use of uh, ID type and offset off, as you understand, the, the, the implementation inside will use uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll poke into uh, pointers and point into offsets and uh, will not uh, check whether the citizen and the tourist actually have uh, the ID type in the same location in the same offset as uh, the header itself was, okay? So that's uh, the, uh, um, the drawback. But, uh, but still, if you know what I'm doing, it gives me the safety of, uh, of, of the visit function. It gives me the safety that I won't, uh, um, I won't mistakenly um, you know, choose uh, one, uh, switch one value with another uh, uh, type of, uh, of a class, okay? So that's an uh, intrusive variant, one of the things that I think uh, people might like to use, okay? Um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, um, you, you can uh, tell where the type is and, and at which offset, and uh, uh, the visit function is still a, a, an O1 function, basically using a lookup table, but the lookup table can be larger because the values, I control them. I control the values so they can be larger. Okay, cool. So we talked about uh, 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 intrusive variant. Now let's talk about uh, uh, another uh, 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 nice uh, uh, addition to that, which is even, even more safe. And that has to do with the fact that, as I mentioned many times, uh, if I want to uh, convey that uh, some other class is my header, I can just make it my base class, okay? My base class is always my header. Okay, so um, if, so if I uh, have a, a variant, if I want a variant or a union of uh, many, many types, all of which have the same base class, which is my header, okay? And the base class can, has a, can have a function telling me what its type is and the type can be const, okay? That way I can uh, potentially be even more safe and make sure at compile time that all the types that I uh, uh, put in my variant are actually really have this, uh, the information that I need in the same offset of the same size, et cetera, et cetera. So basically this is variant of base, okay? So variant of base, uh, again, I, so I, in, in this case, I need each of the structs to derive from the header, okay? And uh, in, in this case, and, and they will each have, uh, um, um, uh, this isn't a must, but in this case, I gave each of them a, a static const expert uh, C type member, which is the inner value that they correspond to, okay? And the, the baseless has the, the actual type in, in runtime. Here I can see that the, the ID with base is the variant of base. I, I need to tell the, the, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, template what's the type of my header. Then I will need to give it some lambda or some way to, to get the header and extract the, the runtime type, okay? And then I'll, I'll also give another lambda, or generic lambda or, or some other uh, mechanism to basically derive uh, the, 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 you know, the constant type of each of the different uh, variants. Okay, so in this case, you see it's a little bit uh, awkward with the remove reference and the decal type, et cetera. But basically I, I wrote a function that can receive a pointer to, to anything auto, okay? And, and this is a generic thing. So at compile time, we'll get a generated Lambda here 
for both a citizen and a visitor. And this function will return citizen, <clears throat> capital citizen for a citizen, capital tourist for a tourist, okay? And then I'll put in all my different variations, okay? Having done that, if I have this variant of base, I can very, very easily add more uh, objects to this uh, class hierarchy, add them uh, here. The compiler will make sure that each of them has this uh, C type member. The compiler obviously makes sure, make, can make sure that all of these uh, objects are derived from ID header, okay? So this is their base class, okay? And, and that way I can have a <clears throat> very strong compile time guarantees that, that all my objects in my union are actually uh, safe and sound, although the memory layout is out of my hand and, and controlled by, uh, uh, by, by some third party spec or by, some, by my legacy code. Okay, so that's a, a variant of base. Um, again, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it can be kind of uh, useful. Like we can use it with visit, et cetera. Um, let's see if I have uh, anything else to say about that. Yeah, I can, I can mention that these uh, uh, two lambdas, they don't have to be lambdas. Yeah, they can be uh, uh, any, anything else that you want. But, but basically the important thing is that I, I need to tell the, uh, um, my class how to look at, at an object in runtime, at the header in runtime and get a type and which are the, with, and, and know at compile time, the exact uh, values like constants were values of each of uh, that correspond to each and every type, each and every, uh, you know, uh, alternative of the variant, okay? So that's variant of base. That's my second uh, tool or utility that uh, I can, that I showed you today. Okay, now let's move into a little bit of a different uh, uh, topic, which is also kind of common uh, um, uh, in, in, I guess, in the in data analysis world, uh, which is uh, not just using one variant, but using a stream or a sequence of many, many variants, okay? So let, if I use C++ and I, um, let's, say, let's, say, let's say I have a vector of variants of three different types, okay? Um, then <clears throat> as, you, as you know, um, vector keeps only uh, objects that are all of the same size. So the size is the, the size of the variant, the largest of all three different types plus the, uh, the tag and maybe padding if, if we need to. So a, a large vector will have, will just occupy a lot of room. And many times this can be wasted room if the largest uh, uh, member in my variant is perhaps uh, uh, much larger than the smaller or, or common ones, okay? And of course, uh, the tags are also uh, need to be kept, but uh, I'm not going, but, but let's say this is uh, uh, obvious in our case. Okay? And, and there are many uh, situations where you see just these streams of, uh, of messages just uh, that you need to go and, and, and look through and parse through, etc. Um, if I go from a vector of variant to vector of inducive variant, things can look a little bit nicer, but actually they aren't in terms of space, okay? Because we move the tag from, uh, from the tail of the object to, to its head. Um, maybe uh, or maybe not, we can uh, do something about the, uh, the padding, but basically in terms of room, in terms of uh, how things look in memory, it's basically the same. Um, but the real world uh, uh, usual way to, to keep this information, to stream this information, to send it over the network is usually much, much more compact. Usually in RAM or in the network or in a file, we'll have a tag and an object, a tag and an object, and each object will actually take up only the space that it needs. It will be variable length, okay? It won't be something that we can really put in a vector. And we still want to uh, use it and work with it, hopefully not with a, a union, uh, hopefully uh, with something that's as safe as a variant. And that's uh, my uh, third uh, uh, utility or, 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 or tweak or tool uh, for today, which is the set of utilities for working with condensed variants. Okay, so condensed variants are like uh, variants, but they are condensed in memory where, where after every tag, you just have the amount of memory that you need for the actual uh, value that you like, okay? So condensed variant iterator, something that looks just like a forward iterator, a constant one that can, you can point it at one of the tags and start running forward from object to object, okay? And it's a plus plus operator will move forward the exact, the correct amount of uh, uh, memory. And it's a, a, a star operator or the reference operator will basically give me back something that looks like a variant of the different types that I can visit with, okay? So that way I can have a, a, a stream of many, many objects. I can go through them, just like a, you know, an S, with an STL algorithm, one by one, call a visitor and the correct uh, visit function 
will be called for each type as uh, according to the tags, okay? So that's a, a, a condensed variant iterator. Okay, it also obviously relies uh, on the intrusiveness thing, although we can technically do it. Uh, uh, and, and the fact that it's uh, a forward iterator is basically because of the fact that the, the tags are in front of the object and not at their end, okay? If the, because, and because the tags are in front and not at the end, it means that it's very hard for me to implement the operator minus minus, okay? Because if I'm at the current location, I can't find the, the tag of the object that's right in front of me, okay? So that's condensed variant iterator. And another uh, 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 nice or sometimes, uh, uh, you know, maybe useful implementation that you can have is a full-on uh, container, not just an iterator, which is a queue, okay? I can't, uh, I can't really put, uh, I can't really implement a vector because uh, uh, it's very, very hard to insert or delete items in the middle uh, uh, of, uh, of, this, of such a condensed item, as well as doing random access, okay? Random access is very, very hard when, these, when every item has a different uh, uh, size. Okay, but the uh, condensed variant queue will give me, uh, let me in place back or push back as well as pop front and, uh, and, and still keep this uh, nice uh, um, property of everything being compact in memory, just keeping holding just as much, just information that I want. Okay, and the basic uh, root of the logic, the, 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 you know, the secret sauce behind all of this, you can see it's very, very simple. Just calling the visit function with a generic lambda that basically just returns, accepts P or pointer P and returns P plus one, okay? And because it's generic, uh, the compiler will actually generate different lambdas for the different types in my variant. And, and the plus one for each of the types will actually know to increment the correct size of with alignment, with everything needed, okay? To, to go, you know, to where I need. Okay, and then I can just static cast it back to the base class, oh, sorry. And uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and 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 with this operation, I can you know just go to the next item, and this is the root of how I can uh, you know both uh, uh, do my iterator, my queue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, any uh, uh, questions about this? Okay, so these are basically my uh, nice uh, set of utilities. I think there are some questions in the chat room, Roy. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah, so as I mentioned, now, yeah. yeah uh, so actually. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I assume that uh, I might uh, be very, very close to my uh, uh, end of time uh, when I get here. So this is a great time for questions. Um, so I won't, I won't even really uh, tell you about uh, the bullets here. You can look at them if you like, and then uh, go ahead, uh, ask me, uh, um, uh, go ahead. I can read the question. Um, there's a question, is the main motivation of intrusive variants to use less memory? Or, or is there some other motivation? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, it's not about memory so much because the tag just moves from, from one place to another. The main motivation is to try and be uh, a little more, I guess, backwards compatible with older uh, formats, cases where let, let me control the values of the tags. You know, sometimes I know that uh, the tag, for example, for a, a, a pixel is the letter P, and the tag for a, a, a vertex is the letter V, and the tag for a triangle is the letter T. Okay, it's not uh, just the number zero, one, two in the variant. Okay. Any yeah, more questions? There's a question can... about const expert lambdas. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it was asked in some context, so I'm not sure I know how to. Okay. So, in... Yeah. So so. So yeah, in C++, I think as of 14, even if you don't say that the Lambda is const expert, it can behave as const expert, okay? As I mentioned in this uh, slide, you don't really have to have a Lambda here, but we have to have something that is const expert, okay? And obviously, by the way, if I have bugs in my slides, bear with me. Uh, hopefully, uh, they aren't uh, too, uh, too hurtful. I do have a question about memory layout because it does seem related to memory layouts. And I'll kind of ask you, and I know there are several committee members here which may answer as well or know the answer about the whole thing, the relation between types and their memory layout serialization. So uh, you're kind of 
you're hovering on this world between CRAs and protocols and data streams and trying to get like zero cost of, uh, conversions to actual types. Yeah. And trying to get the, 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 the layout of the struct or, or the layout of your uh, data type, I would say. Yes. Fit with that. And I'm not sure that you can, that this is totally 100% uh, you be free as of uh, this time. So uh, um, this is more like a question. Uh, um, yeah. Comment so, that or anyone else. Yeah, so, so basically, you know, I, you, you're right, but this is not uh, what, what I'm trying to, to work with, okay? My, my implementations try not to uh, uh, add or remove more uh, uh, UB-ness, I guess, uh, to our work, okay? So yes, of course, in, in C++, if you just read the buffer of bytes uh, uh, from uh, memory mapped files, from files or from stream, and you go ahead and uh, reinterpret casts, it might be UB, okay? Um, there are, uh, there's a lot of uh, work done to try and uh, make things think these things uh, uh, safer and safer with time. People here probably know or maybe know about it, uh, is trivially uh, uh, constructible or, uh, um, or yes, is, uh, yes. uh, and, and there's, uh, there are, is trivially, uh, uh, there are talks about is trivially relocatable and uh, various uh, um, other uh, traits that you can, uh, uh, used to, to try and ask uh, whether uh, uh, different uh, uh, or whether uh, the memory layout of a certain object can be, uh, you know, mem copied, can be, uh, 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 you know, looked at and reinterpreted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm trying not to uh, to look at this topic. And uh, assuming that you know what you're doing, the, the, this, these uh, tools try to not add extra UB into uh, into into your mess. Okay. And hopefully with newer versions of the standard, it will be easier and easier to do all of these things that we want to get really low level, to get really to the bytes and the bits of the packets with being totally kosher regardless. Great question. Anything else? Okay. Uh, I've so got a question. Yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, is there anything to support um, if you have a heterogeneous collection of variants, is there a way to get just like quickly and efficiently get a group of one tagged type? Did you understand what I mean? Um, yeah, I think I do. So, so basically, you know, with every, uh, uh, you know, with every variant, you can very efficiently, in ocean, all of one a time, constant time, you can uh, basically ask it what its type is and also call a, a visitation or a callback. So if you like, you can do a run, a, have a visitor that uh, uh, you know, basically, um, if, it ex if it receives a certain type, um, it returns true. And if it's uh, an, an auto, it, it returns false. And with that visitor, you can basically, you know, go over a, a, an array, condensed or not, and uh, basically filter things out. If you maybe, uh, uh, are, are familiar with the, for example, uh, uh, the ranges, uh, uh, um, um, I guess, ranges uh, uh, TS and ranges uh, libraries in, in C20, perhaps you can create a, such a range of objects and, and, and filter it with, with such a, a predicate, but that's not uh, simple. So basically, uh, I didn't uh, uh, do anything here to try and uh, change the memory layout or put things uh, uh, or add pointers or anything like that. Well, I meant more like, uh, let's say you're looking at a bunch of like, um, I don't know, different instruments of various kinds. You have like uh, currencies versus uh, futures versus other stuff like that. And is there a way to amortize the grouping of each of those items in a heterogeneous group so that you don't have to pay each time you want to fetch the group of those things to do some sort of strategy calculation? Yeah, so I guess basically um, not, not within this scope. So typically, yeah, it's, it's quite common for, for, for an application to, for example, uh, have this uh, uh, maybe a stream of these variant objects and beside it have two arrays or two queues or two uh, vectors of the specific types. And uh, instead of uh, maybe uh, just moving into, through the stream uh, in, in one pass or multiple passes, just move through the stream, use a visitor that uh, 
uh, places each of the uh, uh, items in the correct queue of the right type, and then could move on. And, and that way you basically, as you mentioned, uh, condensed uh, or, or rearranged everything so that everything from one type uh, is in one place, everything in the other type is another place, etc. That's that's all that I know that can be done. Okay, thank you. Any more uh, questions? Right, so it's it's past my time. I wanted to show some bonus about uh, virtualization, but the virtualization, but I don't think we have time for that. So uh, I suggest, well, maybe we can continue with the with with the meeting, and if people would like, we can maybe continue this uh, uh, towards the end or something, or maybe Adi or Inbal, if you want to do something differently, just let me know. Well, thank have, you so uh, much, Roy. That, that was wonderful. Actually, that was really, really interesting. Um, I don't know how many more slides you have. Uh, I think we do have, think, uh, we need five or 10 more minutes, should be fine, I think. Yeah, I think I have about three slides. Okay, it's a totally different topic. It also has to do with uh, with variants. Three or maybe four slides. I'll uh, try to I say go for it. I don't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, great. So, uh, so first of all, a blast from the past. I don't know if you've, uh, if people here Seen, I've seen uh, in, in, I don't think it's even in YouTube, it's from 2013, going native. It was a, a, a precursor to CVP now. Here's Alexandrescu talking about devirtualization. Okay, basically, uh, he was saying that uh, virtual uh, calls and virtual uh, function calls uh, are bad for, in terms of performance. Sometimes we want uh, virtu virtual uh, behavior, but uh, we shouldn't use uh, VPTRs, shouldn't use VTables because they have. Uh, uh, they're wasteful, they're bad, et cetera, et cetera. And he gives a, a, a basically an, an alternative solution with a <clears throat> very, very sh small and condensed uh, virtual table where you can see instead of a VPTR of, of a pointer size, it has a uint t of a tag. The table is, is sort of like a, um, a struct, a static uh, array inside of, of the base class. And each of the derived members basically fills in their uh, methods uh, in, in place. And that was uh, this uh, concept and this idea that uh, um, he presented, uh, showing that he can uh, get some extra, uh, extra performance on top of uh, just virtual function calls. And what I wanted to show you, first of all, is that the same thing uh, right now in uh, C++ can be done with, you know, with basically with uh, very, very easily. But first, I'll, I'll, I'll dig a little deeper into uh, why virtual functions are uh, expensive. Okay, I think many of us. I've heard that virtual functions are no, or know that virtual functions can be very slow in terms of performance. You don't want virtual function calls inside our main loops. And the basic uh, fear that people have is called the uh, branch miss predictions. Okay, I think uh, even in the last uh, course CPP, I saw it in, on uh, on YouTube. There was talk about the microarchitecture. Branch miss predictions are, are are basically the cause uh, or one of the causes of, of bad performance. But actually, our processors have pretty good predictors. Okay, and our, as, as time goes by, we get better and better processors, and they usually have better and better predictions in many, many, many cases. One of the reasons that the, the uh, branch predictions of the processor are very good is because the processor looks and updates its, predict its pre predictors and learns about your code together with its data. Okay, as your code runs, the predictor adjusts itself. Compilers, however, they, when they want to try and they predict whether a function call or whether a virtual function call will go to class A or class B, they see the program and usually they don't see the data, okay? Unless we use profile guided optimization, PGO, okay? Which is, I think, very, very infant and, and, and isn't used to the extent that it should be or, or could be. Uh, many times, even the compiler doesn't even know the, the whole story because we don't use uh, link time optimization or whole program optimization. So even the compiler doesn't even know all the code, okay? C plus 20, we get a new, a new uh, attribute called likely, which can also help sometimes with, with branch mispredictions, but it doesn't really help with virtual function calls. Likely usually helps with switch cases and with, uh, with if statements, okay? So devirtualization is a trick or the way, and many times to help the compiler, okay? Break this, uh, uh, these things. Once the compiler breaks these things, it's not just that it can turn a virtual call into a stat, in, into a re actual uh, call, the compiler can also inline uh, a function can also inspect uh, what's going on inside it and outside it and rearrange things. And that's, I think, a lot of the real cost of the virtual function call, the fact that the compiler doesn't know uh, uh, the, to predict uh, the branch, okay? So here's a, a small use 
uh, or, or, or I'll show a small use case of, uh, of, uh, of virtualization or devirtualization in, uh, in, with STD visit. Okay, so again, we have a base class with a virtual function call, okay, the two derived ones. Those, those derived ones, I, I make them final, okay, to try and again help the compiler a little bit. And let's see what happens when I call visit with auto pointer um, and, uh, uh, and, and call the function foo. And the variant is, is of type D1 and base. Okay, basically, what I'm trying to tell my compiler, hey, compiler, try to, to treat D1 differently than everything else, than D2, okay? If you look at base, okay, if, if, you, if you have no choice, then go and uh, call a, a, a um, you know, do, the, do the virtual function call. But, but also, let's keep a, a tag inside my variant. So my variant has one pointer and one tag, okay? And based on the tag, I can, if, if the tag is uh, this way, not another, the compiler can have a better understanding that D1 might be common, might be used, okay? So that's basically the idea behind my next two slides. Okay, so here you can see uh, Compiler Explorer. I hope people know it. This is basically the same code that I saw above. We have uh, two derived classes. I call one of them common, the other I call rare. The common one returns 750. The rare returns uh, 322. Okay, let's see, the, let's look at the assembler. Kind of tricky. I don't know uh, how many of you know assembly, but basically, um, wait. I need to move this uh, zoom thing. Um, basically, these last two lines here—that's the virtual function call. Okay, that's actually the virtual table, I believe. And the jump on line twenty—that's the virtual function call. Okay, we can see that before, even before the virtual function call, there's this return of seven fifty. Okay, this return of seven fifty is, is a, a, a compiler's attempt to try and, 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 and uh, uh, avoid doing the virtual function call, okay? So this is nice, okay? This is a nice trick to tell the compiler, hey, try to look for the 750 thing before going through the virtual pointers, virtual tables, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But if you look carefully, you'll see that it's, uh, it's nice, but it's also a little bit of cheating because still we have a, a call here, which is the, the, the visit function, okay? And this one, this is basically the, the, the lookup table of the visitor itself, choosing between row 14 and row 17, between the common case and the base case, okay? So I hope I'm not running too fast with it. So I'm, I basically, I converted uh, one virtual function call with another indirect call, okay? Which as Alex Rodescu said, it might be a little nicer because the table is smaller. Uh, I have fewer options, but it's still uh, an indirect call. The reason for that is because we have to use a table here. There's a table lookup because STD visit uses a, a needs to be a O1 complexity. But if you work a little harder, we can write another function, a, a new visit function that doesn't use a, a table. It uses an if, an if cons expert, okay? And here, once we do that, suddenly, you know, our code becomes much, much simpler. I just compare the type with the common type. If it's, if it's false, this, this is the virtual function call, okay? Rows four and five are the virtual function call. Row seven just returns a, a 750, all nice and all good. If we were at CPP 20, I could have put the likely in here and perhaps even the 750 option would be at the top. Uh, I'm not sure it really, really matters that much because again, the, uh, the, the processor will know very, very easily to make the, this jump here predictable uh, to the common case if it's really common. So that's all the slides that I have. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, uh, questions.